Lincoln Macaulay Alexander was born in Toronto on January 21st, 1922, to parents of Caribbean descent. His mother May came from Jamaica, and his father Lincoln was from St. Vincent. As a young schoolboy in the early 30s, it became very apparent that Lincoln M. Alexander II wasn't going to be like everybody else. In 1968, Lincoln Alexander's service to his community reached a new and historic level. When he was elected as the Member of Parliament for Hamilton and became Canada's first Black MP. And what an impression he made. He stood tall in the House, both figuratively and literally. So tall, in fact, that he could be seen as far south as Chicago, where Ebony Magazine featured him in the same issue as another great fighter, Muhammad Ali. In 1980, he served as the chair of the Ontario Workers' Compensation Board, while remaining firmly entrenched in his community by volunteering with numerous organizations and causes. He was honored several times for his contributions to education, race relations, and culture. He was the Honorary Commissioner of the Ontario Provincial Police, and he was the Honorary Chief of the Police Services in Toronto, York Region, and Hamilton. The greatest honour came in 1985, when he was appointed Ontario's 24th Lieutenant Governor. In 1992, Lincoln Alexander was appointed as a Companion of the Order of Canada. In 1996, Prime Minister Chrétien appointed him as the chair of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation. Today, Lincoln Alexander has three schools named after him, a true testament to the impact he had on educators and students all over Ontario. He used his talents in an authentic, grounded, and sensitive way all of his life. It's a road that very few people have traveled with the sincerity and commitment that Lincoln Alexander showed. The Lincoln M. Alexander Award Program, established in 1993, honors the legacy of Lincoln M. Alexander, the 24th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. Recognizing youth who have demonstrated exemplary leadership in eliminating racial discrimination in Ontario. In 2013, the Legislative Assembly of Ontario declared January 21st of each year Lincoln Alexander Day citing Alexander's life as an example of service, determination, and humility. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour. Benvenue. Bonjour. Welcome to the Lincoln M. Alexander Award Ceremony honoring the 100th birthday of late Lincoln Alexander. Before we begin, the Ministry of Citizenship and Multiculturalism would like to acknowledge the land which we are hosting today's virtual ceremony. We want to acknowledge that we are all on lands traditionally occupied by Indigenous peoples. They continue to care for this land. They continue to shape Ontario today. And I want to show my respect. Hundreds of years after the first treaties were signed, they are still relevant today. Please welcome Randall Adjay, Poet Laureate of Ontario, to share a poetry reading. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today and an honor to celebrate. Uh, this poem was uh, written in partnership with the Lincoln Alexander Law School. This poem was something that I wanted to speak about legacy, just talk about how important it is to live a life that is purposeful and to leave a legacy behind. So I hope this poem inspires you to continue building your legacy through and through. Lincoln Alexander once stated, it is not your duty to be average. It is your duty to set a higher example for others to follow. He set some of the highest examples possible. 
Only few ever reach the precipice of such prestigious positions, despite the myriad of obstacles. As the first Black Canadian to serve in the House of Commons, he changed the course of Canadian history. Serving four terms in provincial ministry, he rewrote the narrative and became the author of his own destiny. On this 100th birthday, we celebrate his embellished legacy. Go to school, you're a little Black boy. His mother's words of wisdom given to our nation's pride and joy. Words so simple, yet profound. These words built the gift that is Lincoln Macaulay Alexander. His mother taught him the value of education. His father taught him the value of service. He learned from these two principles and found his purpose. His way of advocating for racial equality was exemplified through his actions. Education and service provided a perspective for his passions. He refused to be defined by the ignorant perception of others or limited by a system that wasn't built to see him succeed. Nothing and no one would stand in the way of his dreams. In one of his most courageous moments at the time, Link challenged an authority figure to think of his leadership position and choice of words after using a racial slur. Despite the risk, his integrity wouldn't allow him to be silenced. Moving forward, he took his own advice as guidance. Lincoln Alexander often told young people to challenge authority despite the heavy penalty they may pay, but urged sometimes challenging authority is the only way to create lasting change. No one ever said it would be easy being the first, especially during a time when civil rights leaders were seeing the worst. As a trailblazer, it was his spirit that helped him persist, paving the way for many generations through his empathy and grit. He became one of four partners in creating Canada's first multicultural law firms before being appointed to the Queen's Council in 1965. He believed in taking action and never complaining on the sidelines. His life's work is exemplary and sublime. His accomplishments have set a precedence for us all to follow. Despite the mountains we climb, we must carry his torch towards tomorrow. He settled for nothing less than the best he possessed inspiring us all to strive for excellence. As a public servant, he sought to solve social problems. The one thing I admire most about him, failure was never an option. As the 24th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, he was active in multicultural affairs. He approached his work, his work with wisdom, compassion, and care, going the lengths that very few would even dare. In every role he was appointed, he advocated for equality, diversity, and inclusion. He listened to the people, collaboratively creating solutions. And as even in his elderly age, he remained a student of life. He was a visionary with extraordinary insight. There are hidden treasures buried within us all, a purpose in which we are destined and called to use our gift to serve each day, building a foundation with each brick we lay. With each rising and fallen sun, we are propelled to excavate the truth within us creating a legacy that transforms generations. We are both the actors and the directors of our lives and the world is our stage, waiting for us to extract these gifts within our time, paving a new way. Like Lincoln Alexander, we all have the propensity to create lasting change. There are few people who have been decorated with such excellent accomplishments. I am moved and inspired by Lincoln Alexander, his tenacity and ability to see the good in others despite what they saw in him. I challenge you to build your path and leave a legacy, one that is purposeful and promising. Look within to find your gift, your destiny. Leave this earth better than you found it. Discover your precipice and move mountains. Like Lincoln Alexander, let nothing and no one stand in your way. May your talents serve all Canadians with each and every brick you lay. Thank you so much for listening. Again, this was in partnership with the Lincoln Alexander Law School uh, that commissioned me to write this poem. And uh, again, just encouraging everybody to continue building a legacy and serving those that you can. Thank you again. Thank you, Randall Ajay. Please welcome the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, her honor, the Honorable Elizabeth Dowswell, to bring remarks. Your Honor. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Alexander, Ministers Gill and Lecce, honored recipients and distinguished guests. Hello, everyone. 
And a very warm thank you to Randall for those inspiring words. As Lieutenant Governor, I always look forward to the Lincoln Alexander Awards. How wonderful it is to be in the company of such groundbreaking young change makers. And this year, of course, is very special. Dina, Emmanuel, and Sydney, I'm so happy we got to see those stirring images from Lincoln Alexander's life together. And that on his 100th birthday, we get to celebrate your own exceptional achievements. In my travels throughout this province, I've often been stopped by someone who vividly recalls what it was like as a young person to have Alexander, Lincoln Alexander, shake their hand, look them in the eye, and affirm their potential. There's no question Link, as he was affectionately known, would have been so proud of the three of you. Like you, he was perceptive, outspoken, driven, and a generous-minded leader. The era in which he grew up was very different from our own in some regards, and in others, not so much. In his autobiography, he wrote, and I quote, there was no doubt in me from my earliest years of what it meant to be a visible minority, even though it would be decades before that term would become common. In the 1920s and 30s, racism was simply a grim fact of everyday life. You could be confronted with it anywhere from your job, to school, to out on the street. He wrote about how in high school, he was often singled out for name calling and other insults. And that meant I had to fight for respect. Link was to spend what he called a lifetime fighting for racial equality. He fought institutional racism to become one of the first black lawyers in Ontario, and then to become the first black member of federal parliament, the first black cabinet minister, and the first black lieutenant governor of this province. Later on, as the first chair of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, he fought racial profiling. If he were alive today, no doubt he would still be fighting. Because of course the question arises, will this fight ever end? 100 years after Link was born, there remain distinct inequities and inequalities. And I'm afraid the pandemic has only made them seem worse. What gives me hope and what would give him hope too is the new generation. You've been handed down so many challenges, systemic racism, climate change, faltering democracies, the list goes on. But thankfully, I've met so many young Ontarians who've told me that they are committed to making deep, meaningful and lasting change. They're being inspired by leaders such as you. So on behalf of a grateful province, I congratulate Emmanuel Adigbodega, Sydney Hassett Richardson, and Dina Ephraim. For your initiative, your energy, and the way you galvanize others to help stamp out racism and discrimination, you are such very deserving winners of the Lincoln Alexander Awards. I hope that someday you'll actually have the chance to visit the Lieutenant Governor's suite here in Queen's Park. You'll see the portrait of Link that normally presides over this ceremony and that reminds all of us who work here of the high standards that we must set for ourselves. Link's unforgettable achievements arose from his lifelong commitment to serving the public. He broke barriers to give opportunities to others. May these awards given in his name encourage you to continue the remarkable work that you're doing to build community in these extraordinary times. And finally, I want to express my sincere gratitude to members of the selection committee for their hard and important work, Chair Denise Cieli, Mark Beckles and Kubra Haga.
And finally, thank you as well to the family members and friends who are with us today. Thank you for supporting these young people. Together, may we all follow in their fearless steps as they point the way to a better world. Thank you, Your Honor. And now please welcome Erica Alexander, granddaughter of the late Lincoln Alexander. Hello, everyone. Thank you for uh, including me in today's uh, program. We are celebrating Lincoln Alexander Day. And not only that, we are celebrating my grandfather's 100th birthday celebration. It is always an honor for myself and my family to be a part of the Lincoln Alexander Awards. It was something that was extremely special to my grandfather. And it's been a blessing that I've been able to um, be a part of the award since his passing. And I really thank uh, her honor and the committee behind the awards for really um, bringing me into your community. I'd like to share something that I wrote today uh, on behalf of my grandfather's birthday. So I will go ahead. Um, this is from my heart. I believe in the importance of celebrating Lincoln Alexander Day because it recognizes a person who dedicated their life to the betterment of an entire nation, a person who traveled across the country to meet people from varying backgrounds and ethnicities, from farmers to business owners to the elder and the youth alike, a person who led by example and carried themselves always in their truest and most honest form, and a person who accepted others uh, for who they were and enjoyed sharing and hearing stories from those he met along his journey. I believe my grandfather Lincoln was an example of all of these traits In recognizing these qualities and celebrating him in such a grand gesture as having a national day, day named in his honor. I think it's important to embody these same traits regardless of what one's livelihood is not only to help the growth of the communities we interact with and live within, but also to promote the growth of one's own journey. Uh, this January 21st is especially exciting, as I mentioned, because it's the celebration of my grandfather's 100th birthday. It's always been my grandfather's goal to live to be 100 years old, even though he made it to the accomplished age of 90. I sometimes imagine what my grandfather would have been doing with those extra 10 years. I wonder how he would be managing in such an unpredictable time that we're living in, even with the journey he had throughout his life. Since my grandfather passed away in 2012, there's been so much celebration and recognition of his life, including, um, of course, the annual Lincoln Alexander Awards that, we, that I've become a part of since 2013. Um, and it's just been a really a special time without him even being here in the physical form. The memory of his life accomplishments and experiences continue to inspire and influence those who come to see their, uh, his story within themselves. Um, just to finish, I would like to uh, pay my respects and congratulate the award winners. Um, to Emmanuel and Dina and Sydney. Um, it's just a great honor to every year have the privilege to meet, well, virtually meet this year, um, all the award recipients. It's always an honor and I'm always inspired by the youth who really put their whole heart into their community and their families and really lead by example. I think my grandfather would be exceptionally proud of the, the award recipients. And I know that he is here with us in spirit as, as I am here representing him. Um, so I just really like to take the time and opportunity to be grateful and thankful that I'm here participating today and happy birthday to my grandfather. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. It gives me great pleasure to now welcome some of our past Lincoln M. Alexander Award recipients. Please welcome our first former recipient, Kwesi Johnson, a 2007 award recipient. Honorable Lieutenant Governor, Honorable Minister Lecce and Gail, recipients and distinguished guests. My comments today, though brief, are an earnest plea to all the generation of today for you to keep the faith in the face of cynicism, to be hopeful among the onslaught of bleak predictions for what the future may hold. As a former Lincoln M. Alexander recipient 
and chair of the selection committee, former that is, I had the privilege of sitting on both sides of the proverbial ledger. One of the striking things, one of the most striking things that I came to realize is that the brilliance, ingenuity, creativity of applicants each year should have been viewed as a source of unprecedented and untapped potential for the challenges faced the world over. To this year's recipients, Dina, Emmanuel, and Sydney, I congratulate you and welcome you to the starting line of a race that some will view as one with great expectations. To all applicants, past, present, and future that were not or may not be successful recipients of this award, my sincere hope is that you double down on your commitment to your craft and to your communities. Your rewards will forever be written in the history books for generations of young people coming up behind you to follow. In closing, I think it's fitting to share that Lincoln Alex Alexander's legacy is, has been synonymous with being the first in so many extraordinary accomplishments. To the recipients and to past and future applicants, you will all go on to be the first in many accomplishments of your accomplishments. The true test of your commitment to leaving this world a better place, however, is gonna be contained in one question. Will you ensure that your first won't be the last, but the first for many young people the world over to follow? As my good brother Randell shared in his poem, Mr. Alexander once said, it is not your duty to be average, it is your duty to set a higher example for others to follow. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Kwesi. Please now welcome Heather Carey Quelling, a 2009 award recipient. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, especially this year's recipients. And thank you to the award secretariat for inviting me to speak. It's been 13 years since I received this award, and looking back, I can honestly say that it was one of the first instances where my anti-racism work was formally recognized. And let's be real, anti-racism work is very challenging, both personally and professionally. This is not just work, this is our everyday lives. The recognition and having the honor of meeting the late Honorable Lincoln Alexander in person boosted my motivation to forge a career in equity and anti-racism. With much work and support from professional mentors, family, and friends, my career has come full circle and I'm so grateful to currently be working with Ontario's Anti-Racism Directorate. Reading about the amazing work of this year's recipients in the middle of a pandemic is so inspiring. Um, congratulations to you all, and I encourage you to keep doing the excellent work that you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. And now please welcome the Honorable Stephen Lecce, Minister of Education. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor to be with you. Uh, and I wanna thank very much Lieutenant Governor for her remarks and for her inspiration today. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be joined with you with my colleague, uh, Minister Gill, as we take part in this year's Lincoln Alexander Award Ceremony. It is a wonderful example to come together as a province and as a country to acknowledge the important critical achievements that are making our province strong. I'm especially pleased to recognize these three outstanding young leaders for their commitment to combating racial discrimination in building a better Ontario, a stronger economy, and more free democracy. As you know, today's awards are named after, of course, the late Honorable Lincoln Alexander. As was noted, it cannot be understated, the first Black person in Canada elected in the House of Commons, the first Black federal cabinet minister, and when he served in the government uh, of Joe Clark, and Ontario's Lieutenant Governor between 1985 and 1990, around the time your Minister of Education was born, the first Black Vice Regal Representative in Canada, it really does underscore a legacy of service. As Lieutenant Governor, he was a champion, 
for racial equality in the cause of the young people of the next generation. And so it is only fitting that we today on Lincoln Alexander's 100th birthday, we recognize youth who are carrying on his ideals to promote positive societal change. And I am proud to take this opportunity to personally thank Sydney, Emmanuel and Dina for their leadership, for their dedication and passion. Through your actions to combat racism and discrimination, you have demonstrated exemplary leadership in Canada. And I know your work will inspire others to follow in your footsteps, just as you have followed the path of Lincoln Alexander that he paved during his long and illustrious career. We're continuing to celebrate and build on this legacy with a province where quality of opportunity is a reality, not an aspiration. And we know the path to afford uh, is a commitment to ensuring our schools remain safe, welcoming and support for all students of all experiences. And so in doing so, we continue as a society, as a country to build on Lincoln Alexander's legacy together. And together we are changing the lives of future generations. So please accept my best wishes for this wonderful celebration and once again, thank you for inviting me to take part in today's events uh, and to be a part of the celebration as well of Lincoln Alexander and his life. I hope you continue to be passionate, active, engaged citizens, I know you will, whose extraordinary accomplishments will continue to inspire us all. And thank you. Thank you, Minister Lecce. Please welcome the Honorable Parm Gill, Minister of Citizenship and Multiculturalism to bring greetings and present today's recipients. Well, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted and privileged to join, of course, our honor, uh, Erica Alexander, granddaughter of uh, the late Honorable Lincoln Alexander and the Alexander family. My colleague, Minister Lecce, at this year's ceremony to present the Lincoln M. Alexander Awards. Today, on what would have been Mr. Alexander's 100th birthday, we reflect on his many accomplishments, his tremendous leadership, and the change that he drove in Ontario. Together, we pay tribute to the legacy of a trailblazer in fight for racial equality. As we've heard, Lincoln Alexander was Canada's first Black Member of Parliament, first Black Cabinet Minister, and first Black Lieutenant Governor. He was also a lawyer, of course, and a war veteran. The award bearing his distinguished name recognizes exceptional individuals who have shown leadership in working to eliminate racial discrimination. Sadly, we continue to see instances of racial discrimination and acts of violence playing out on the world stage, including right here at home. This makes the efforts and the accomplishments of our awarded recipients tremendously important and meaningful. Ontario is grateful for the contributions of these young leaders and encourages others to follow in their footsteps. As the Minister responsible for citizenship and multiculturalism, I'm pleased to see how these dynamic individuals are making a real difference. Together, we will help to eliminate racial discrimination and create a more equitable and inclusive Ontario. I would now like to invite Her Honor and Minister Lecce to join me on the screen as I introduce the recipients of Lincoln M. Alexander Awards. Our first recipient is Sydney Hassett Richardson. Driven by her passion for equity, inclusion, and diversity, Sydney has used her strong leadership and creativity to significantly impact her community. Since joining Redefine 20, an organization dedicated to educating, connecting, 
and celebrating BIWAC in 2020, Sydney has helped them develop engaging workshops and programs. She has also authored several articles outlining the health inequalities amongst minority communities, social detriments of health, and mental wellness. During her time at McMaster University, Sydney founded Black Space, a community for Black women on campus. Her dedication earned the team the Social Justice Award from the McMaster Student Union Club Association in 2021. Frustrated by the lack of representation and negative portrayal of Black women in media and art, she also launched her illustration brand, which she continues to grow online. Sydney has volunteered with the Hamilton Black History Council and co-chaired Black graduation to celebrate the contributions of Black graduates at McMaster. In 2020, she received the Nelson Mandela Social Justice Award at the Reverend John C. Holland Awards and returned in 2021 as the Selections Committee Chair. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be a recipient for this award. And I have to say also thank you to Jessica for nominating me and everyone else who supported my application and the work that I do. Um, I'm currently in school right now for my master's of public health um, at Yale. So like it's a different community. So I'm looking for more volunteer opportunities and building new connections. And I hope to continue doing research when I get back home where I can do more community engaged work to empower black youth and continue to remove barriers, dismantle racism and build on Lincoln M. Alexander's legacy. Thank you. Our second recipient is Emmanuel Adebelga. Just waiting for him to pop up. There you are on the screen, Emmanuel. So a little bit about Emmanuel. Emmanuel has made an impact in his community and on schools across the Toronto Catholic District School Board. Since arriving in Canada seven years ago, his firsthand experience with bullying and racial profiling, as well as his passion for social justice and building safe communities have been the driving force behind his achievements. To raise awareness and educate staff and students about discrimination and social issues happening across the world, Emmanuel co-founded Shamade College School's Black History Committee. As the school's president, Emmanuel has hosted events focused on educating people on the impact of social injustices. When the world was put on pause and we were faced with the racism and discrimination that happens globally, Emmanuel continued to speak up. Emmanuel has been featured in the Toronto Star on the front page of the Catholic Register and invited to speak on media stations such as CBC, the Global News. And recently, he was presented with the Toronto Catholic District School Board Achievement Award for demonstrating outstanding achievement and leadership. He was also invited to participate in an initiative aimed at dismantling racism and discrimination in schools. Thank you and congratulations. Uh, thank you, Minister Gill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lecce. And of course, Your Honor, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. Um, and I just want to say thank you to the committee that put this award together. Um, it's definitely an honor to, um, to be one of the recipients this year um, with such an incredible legacy that um, Lincoln Alexander had already created for himself and it's still going on today. Um, it's, it's an absolute privilege to be in one of those um, recipients. Uh, they're um, honored in this way. Um, my, my, so my work um, with um, social justice and um, working in the community all began uh, a few years ago. Um, and it's been, it's been nothing but an absolute um, privilege to um, continue to fight for people and continue to be a part of my community 
uh, in a way that I never could have imagined when I first started off. Um, and I um, and I've been I've been privileged to meet um, so many people that have been um, a catalyst to where I am today. Um, and Minister Lecce, um, you know, um, he's been an absolute um, mentor to me, and um, I'm so honored to um, to even be here. Um, words can't explain. Um, but I'm currently in Vancouver, BC. I'm studying uh, my for my bachelor's degree uh, in political science, uh, criminology, and psychology. Um, and from there, um, I plan on um, going on to continue my work, obviously, um, in the political uh, sphere. I'm also running in student governance here at SFU. Um, so it's it's um to be in this position even today, um, while still being a student, um, I think it's a, it's a testament to the great things that I've already done, but the great things I'm looking forward to do even where I am right now. Um, and I just want to say thank you again to the committee. Thank you, Minister Lecce. Thank you, Minister Gale. Thank you, Your Honor. It's an absolute privilege. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. Our final recipient is Dina Efren. A little bit about Dina, known for her fearless leadership. Dina never shies away from difficult and often uncomfortable conversations surrounding race, equity, and social justice. As the co-president of her school's diverse student union, she hosted the 2020 Black History Month, where she discussed the raw and harmful experiences of racism. In 2021, she called on teachers to include the Black experience in every class, inspiring a group of 80 educators to reassess their classes. As students were posting Black Lives Matter, Dina took it as an opportunity to set up a bi-weekly event to discuss the social injustices happening all over the world. News about these discussions spread across the community, sparking interest in students from other schools. Dina advocated for change and collaboration by using her role as an editor for the school newspaper, as well as her column, the Kitsipi Times. Dina has been asked to speak on various panels and has made major contributions to the Black Youth Forum. She was also selected as the valedictorian and received a district award for excellence in equity. Thank you and congratulations, Dina. Thank you to Her Honor, Minister Gill and Minister Lecheng and all respected guests. It is truly an honor to be recognized under the name of such a prolific leader and trailblazer in Canadian history. I would like to start off by thanking my parents who at a very young age instilled the importance and foundation of community in me as a first generation Eritrean Canadian. It was in discovering my Eritrean identity that mobilized and motivated me to give back to my community here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to feel empowered by both my Canadian and Eritrean identity. I'd also like to give a special thank you to the executive team of my former high school's diverse student union. I got to work with this group of students for four years, but very closely in my last year. And so this award is just as much mine as it is theirs. And I say that because one of the most important lessons that I've learned in the work of equity is that there are no personal achievements and accomplishments when you work within a community, all accomplishments are because of everyone within that community. And finally, I wanna give a special thank you to Melanie White, who was my former English teacher and Superintendent Shannon Smith. These two women showed and taught me what it means to be an educator and a mentor. They persisted in their positions as advocates and sounding boards for myself and all racialized students within our school community. No matter how far or where this journey takes me, I'll never forget my community here in Ottawa and my roots back in Eritrea. My goal for the future is to continue to live and act empathetically, to use my personal lived experiences as a way of connecting with those in my community. I'm currently in my first year of university doing a double major in political science and anthropology. 
and I can't wait to continue my work in racial equity and social justice. Thank you again, Awad Nahapash, and victory to the masses. Thank you, Dina. And let me also thank your honor, Minister Lecce, Erica Alexander, and the guest speakers. Thank you to the selection committee members, Chair Denise Seal, Mark Beckles, and Cobra Hager. And congratulations to our Lincoln M. Alexander Award recipients, Sydney, Manuel, and Dina. Through your leadership and courage, we are making our province a more equitable and inclusive province. I would like to end today's proceeding by quoting the Honorable Lincoln Alexander, as it's been mentioned a couple of times during the ceremony already. And he said, and I quote, it is not your duty to be average. It is your duty to set a higher example for others to follow, end of quote. I know he would have been most proud of all of our recipients. And it is my pleasure to invite Sydney, Manuel, and Dina to return to the screen to join her honor, Minister Lecce and Erica, for a final congratulations. To all of you watching, thank you for joining us. Thank you everyone for attending the Lincoln M. Alexander Award Ceremony. Feel free to take a screenshot of our contact information and you are encouraged to follow the LG social media and share your ceremony photographs. This officially concludes today's broadcast. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech.